Are you a fan of Whole Lotta Red by Playboy Carney? Are unique designs more your thing? Do you prefer control, hybrid or speed pads? Whatever your preferred surface is, Infinity Mice will most likely have something for you to enjoy, and this video will help you decide which one you should pick up if you're interested in getting a new infinite pad. First of all, I wanted to mention that all of these pads were shipped out to me for review. Huge thanks to Jin over at Infinity Mice for sending these units out. And as always, all my opinions are my own as they are with all of my videos and recommendations. Also, currently almost 90% of you guys watching still aren't subscribed, so make sure to hit that sub button if you're enjoying the content. Starting with the boring stuff, the infinite pads are all shipped out double boxed and flat in some cardboard. The XL size that I have all these pads in measure the standard 490 by 420 millimeter size. There's also a square size available for all of these pads that measure 490 by 490 millimeters. The stitching on all of my pads is ever so slightly below the surface and has at no point affected me in game. All the infinite pads are 3.5mm thick and share a custom polyurethane base. They have also never slid on my desk whilst playing in game, and we'll get into more details of their base right now. The base that Infinity Mice call IPU is simply a name that they have come up with. It stands for infinite polyurethane. It has a slightly different feeling to most porn pads that you're used to by now. As mentioned, the base is 3.5mm thick on the infinite pad, and the overall experience is pretty similar to the way that the base on an Artisan Soft feels like. The main difference is the Artisan Soft base being 4mm thick compared to the 3.5mm on the infinite pads. But whilst comparing both of them in-game, I really do think that Infinity Mice have come up with a great alternative that is both cheaper and still gives a similar experience to Poron. With the main difference besides the thickness being the actual rebound of the infinite pad feeling a tad more responsive. As already mentioned, the base has never slipped on my desk and I've got nothing to complain about personally. Also, they've got their logo embossed onto their bases, which looks fucking sick and premium as hell. The reason why Infinity Mice chose this blend over others like Poron, I was told by Jin over at Infinity Mice that it is compatible on more surfaces, while also allowing for a lower cost for the customer. He also mentioned that it is more weather resistant, which allows designs on fabrics and more temperature and humidity resistance. I do think that the choice they made is a good one, but it does come with one issue that I'll get into with the first surface that we'll have a look at now. The speed pad is my least favorite surface out of the bunch, with the main reason being the QC issues it comes with on my copy. I really don't understand how a great part of the reviews that I have seen so far were calling this their new main either, even despite the QC issues, since the surface mostly just feels like a windbreaker. However, the QC issues I'm having are the edges being raised on the top and the bottom of my pad, which has led to the surface starting to peel from the base due to the stress that is actually being put on the surface by these raised edges. This is exactly what Stubby and also other reviewers have been experiencing with their review copies. There is a lot of QC issues in the mouse pad with my specific copy and other reviewers having the same issue. As you see here, you can see the mouse pad is physically pulling up from the base itself. I've reached out to Infinity Mice and they've told me that this is still a very rare issue on retail units. But if your pad has this issue, they'll make sure to get you a replacement or a refund. Also, they have promised me that the issue is fixed for their upcoming batch as well. But besides those issues, I do see it being an attractive premium speed surface to some degree with the overall speed of the surface being supposedly similar to that of the Raiden mid. However, I sadly can't give you any in-person comparisons since I don't own a pad of this category myself at this time. The surface felt really great for tracking heavy games, but due to the lack of stopping power, I didn't enjoy this pad nearly as much as my Corrosion Ninja, for example. Now, to my second least favorite surface out of the bunch, the Control. The Control has kind of a fuzzy feeling and is pretty darn slow. Compared to the new Saturn Pro Surface, or even the one on my Orange Zero, the control actually feels quite a bit slower and just very controlled in general. And also, when changing directions, you do feel quite some tug as well. Especially compared to these other pads. It really is ever so slightly above the border of being an actual mud pad. And I personally can't understand how people like Stubby are actually able to main this thing. I personally didn't have any fun using this pad since this is way too slow for my likings. But if you've got a Saturn or a Zero and wish some more control, this is definitely the pad for you. 
Now to one of the surfaces of this sponge that I actually enjoyed using, the hybrid. When Stoppy first told me that this was a Heen clone, I didn't believe him. But when I actually used it for the first time on stream, this was my reaction. Like who still wants a Heen clone? Oh, this feels like a Heen, holy fuck. <laughs> The surface is very textured and gives me insane Heian vibes, but the overall speed seems a bit slower than that of the Heian when going off of my memory and also having talked to others who own both pads. But do remember to take my impressions here with this pad with a grain of salt since it's been a while since I've had a Heian on my desk. The overall feeling of the texture and the speed of the hybrid reminds me a lot of the Freefall SV Base Control Plus, of which I've already made a video about as well. But since the hybrid actually has a base you can press into, just like when comparing it to the Heian, the overall speed of the hybrid feels slightly slower. Getting into my favorite pad after bunch, and even one of my favorite pads for the entire year so far, the Vagabond. Even though this is based on the before mentioned hybrid surface as well, this one actually feels so different that I treat it as an entirely different pad. The overall speed is slower than that of the hybrid we just had a look at, but the texture is much smoother and way more enjoyable in my personal opinion. It does give me Hayate Atsu vibes, especially since it's slower than the Heian but faster than the Zero, but I would say that the general speed of the Vagabond is slightly slower than that of the Hayate Atsu. Now when it comes to my personal opinion about these pads, I found myself enjoying the Vagabond a ton and could definitely see myself maining it, especially since I have mained the Hayate Atsu for over two years before. I also find the design and the actual prints to be absolutely stunning and of insane quality in real life. However, since I'm personally more interested in even firmer and to some degree also thinner pads, I'm much looking forward to what Infinity Mice will come up with in the future. Besides the Vagabond, I didn't have too much fun using the other pads, and I'm also really not a fan of their color choice of this initial lineup whatsoever. I personally didn't enjoy the surface of the speed, nor the almost muddy feel of the control, and as a freefall enjoyer, I can't see myself picking up the hybrid again either. But even though I didn't love all these pads equally, I still think that for 35 US dollars, you can't do anything wrong with getting any of these pads compared to what other brands out there are asking for these days. Knowing that the goal of the Infinite Pad lineup was to bring out a more budget friendly lineup for the community, I think that their goal has been well achieved. However, I can't recommend getting the speed pads due to the QC issues me and other friends of mine are experiencing. But yeah, that's about it for my personal opinion. Now, to the conclusion. Are these pads worth picking up, and if so, which one should you choose? If you own a Saturn or a Zero and want a slower pad, definitely go for the Control. If you want a more affordable and slightly slower Heian, the Hybrid is the way to go. As soon as the QC issues are fixed for the upcoming batch, the Speed is one of the best options out there in its pricing category. When it comes to the Vagabond, I can certainly say that if you've ever been interested in getting a hybrid pad or want a slightly slower Hayate Atsu, this is the one you should have gotten when it was actually in stock. The smooth texture paired with the stunning design is one of the very best options I've ever seen, especially for it being priced at 39 US dollars. However, since this was solely a limited edition, you can't get this any longer. But you best believe I will try my best to make sure that Infinity Mice bring it back in some kind of way. Even though I do feel you're getting your money's worth with all of these pads, I personally can't see myself picking up any of these red pads ever again. But with some texture variations and some different thicknesses and colors or even designs, I'm definitely curious to see what they're actually working on and what they have in store for us in the future. Anyway, that's about it for this video. As always, if you're actually interested in getting any of these pads, I will make sure to list them down below in the description. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe or follow me over on Twitch for next time I'm unboxing and testing out new products like these. Peace out. Oh, bro, that shit was bust.